were born and raised during World War II, the Cold War, Korea, the Civil Rights fight, and Vietnam. They grew up in an America that was conservative, and in a lot of ways, rife with fear. Then suddenly, in the late 1960s, thousands of them spontaneously dropped out of that society. Fear became fun. Nuclear mushroom clouds became mushroom trips, work became welfare, and repression became revolution. Who were these people? Did they change anything? Did they learn anything? What do four unknown hippies who met in 1969 and dropped out together have to say about their trip as they face retirement? My name's Caleb and this is the story of My Hippies. This is Molly, my mother. That's me with her in the early 1970s. And my stepfather, Jack. And my mother's younger sister, Maya. And her husband, Cove. There is nothing that could describe the passions involved. There's no TV show or no films or nothing that will adequately describe hippies during the Vietnam War. Cellular appeasement of home, satisfied. Bombs and policemen risen through the sky. Chinese babies learning how to die. There's no way back, and it's so lame to try. Back. I was Danny Coviello from Milford, Connecticut. Here's my yearbook. I'm a dork in there. It's in 1959-60 year class president Daniel Coviello. I came from a uh, blue collar. Uh, factory foreman, Milford, Connecticut, middle class, um, racist, middle class. I, I was uh, a New York girl and a West Hartford girl who, like my mom, Teddy, still always felt like a New York girl. Yeah, even like in high school in Connecticut, I was so sure I wasn't a Connecticut girl. I had to be something else. I pierced my ears. And then mostly by about, I guess it was 61, when the Jean-Luc Godard film Breathless came out, au bout de souffle, and I totally became Gene Seberg. So that was kind of who I was uh, becoming. It When I left for college, I'd cut all my hair off and was cutting it with a a, a little manicure scissors and planning to be in Paris selling the New York Herald Tribune on the street. And I was also a pretty having a good time kind of girl, um, but was ready to do my junior year in Paris. Before I dropped out, I was a high achieving, uh, very serious, scholastic person whose main uh, hobby was reading. I loved school. I did. I was a good girl. I did everything I was supposed to do until I made a few changes. I married a non-Jew. I moved to California. I got separated from my husband and I moved to a commune. A lot was expected of me as, as a, a daughter of uh, parents who were born in time to experience the depression, um, parents whose 
parents themselves were immigrants from Russia. Um, I was the first one to complete college. My parents had gone to college for a year, but then had to work. Well, my father ran a grocery store. My mother was a housewife in Connecticut, Manchester, Connecticut. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's the good old days. I was a graduate student in English at the University of Connecticut. Kennedy got assassinated, I remember that happening. But then I went to San Francisco. It was starting to happen then, I was 63, it was starting to happen then that uh, people were taking drugs and there was counterculture was starting to happen, you know. Um, I stayed there for about uh, oh, less than a year even. Went to Mexico again ate mushrooms, came back, and by the time I got back, it was, things were happening, 67, I think it was. We lived a tribe, yes, we were a tribe of people that took a lot of drugs together, loved together, lived together, in general. Spent our lives together for two years. I went immediately from a searching college student to a tribe of people who had similar hippie tendencies and were doing what hippies were doing uh, simultaneously across the country. Tribal stuff, taking acid together, um, and separating themselves from the mainstream. But the band was uh, certainly central to the development of the tribe. Imagination. Dead imagination. Imagination. Dead imagination. Imagination. Dead imagination. Only my mind in a dream. made music and when we uh, took acid to we you know, by the lake and bang on drums and whatnot, you know, that kind of thing. It was a central part of sure the music was central to what was going on. Pre hippie, I thought nothing of of uh, going to hitchhiking from Connecticut to Chicago and uh, to go to the corporate offices of Kraft Food to the head of the marshmallow division and ask the guy could I have some marshmallows uh, to make this movie? I'll give you credit at the end of the movie. I'll feature your product as a uh, product placement in the movie. Whatever you reap, you shall sow. Either you shrink or you grow. Either you sink or you float. While Jack and Cove were dropping out of college and dropping into the tribe by the lake in Connecticut, my mother and Maya, having moved out of New York City and finished high school in the Connecticut suburbs, were getting married. So you see, you have nothing to win now. Yeah, yeah. Then we got to San Francisco, and I suppose things changed almost immediately. And here's a picture of the kind of bohemian girl that I, and I was trying to get Co uh, Paul to have a beard and, and, you know, be sort of very cool. That's when we were living in San Francisco. In fact, Teddy wrote on the back, Berkeley, April 68. So I was kind of a, kind of a real bored, bohemian housewife with Paul until we all moved into the Haight Street house. Went off with Ocean's Ocean, India, my children, their mother. 
went off with her, with her to San Francisco for the second time and uh, wound up on Haight Street. I met Jack on Haight Street. I was living in Mill Valley then with my husband and with Caleb and um, my sister was at Haight Street with her f first husband and we used to go in and visit and um, that's where I met Jack. He and his pregnant wife were just leaving for Mexico to have their baby. That's where I met him, 1969. I remember your mother coming through the door in San Francisco and the, uh, the afternoon light. The door was, uh, had these little squares of glass in the window that were beveled on each corner. And uh, the light sparkled off the windows, you know. I remember your mother coming up the stairs and the light sparkling around her. And uh, that was my introduction to your mom. Paul and his friend Jim from the Poverty Program and Marcia and I are the ones who originally rented the upstairs flat of the Haight Street house. And I remember crying hysterically when we moved in there because I knew it was a change of my life forever from living alone with my husband, a little, you know, kind of the housewife Teddy and Ernie had always wanted me to be, to the communal life at Haight Street, which went uh, beyond my ever imagination. As a group, we've known each other since 69. Uh, uh, I knew Jack earlier than that. Uh, and I met my darling wife, Maya, on Haight Street, and uh, we were hippies together. We were when our two tribes, the uh, tribe on the second floor got together with the tribe on the first floor, and then the third floor became a place where the alternative people that were brought into the group lived. <laughs> yes, 1969, Haight Street. San Francisco. But then I remember meeting Cove on the front steps of the Haight Street house and I think he picked me up and swung me around and the first time we met and said something about running away with him and probably that was kind of about it. And then during that time I did spend really a lot of time with both of them and I thought of them as these brothers, you know, and the ways they were alike. Well, I, I had a good time in Haight Street. I met the most unique people. I'm dimensional Florida, baby, someday you know, you know, gonna blow it away. I was in the midst of living among the most art, uh, artistic things that, that ever existed, uh, living theater, uh, rock and roll concerts, uh, uh, in, in Cheap Meadow Park, in the Golden Gate Park. I mean, the, oh man, there were so many hippies, there was so much drugs, there was so much sex. A lot of sex and lots of rock and roll. So wonderful concerts, the beginning of all the great bands. There were free concerts in Golden Gate Park. We um, Hari Krishna it all the way to the ocean. Rock and roll was definitely there. I, I mean, I guess even having no money or anything, we definitely always had music in the house, in that Hate Street house. Um, I really remember the Beatles' White Album. But I do remember that and the Stones and going to the Fillmore and the Doors and the music being a big, big part of it. I used to go up to uh, Golden Gate Park to the free concerts up there and the more of the local bands, the Grateful Dead, the Jefferson Starship, Jefferson Airplane, uh, Sons of Champlin and had great experiences uh, with big free concerts there and great experiences in clubs in San Francisco. You could go to all... The, you could go to these venues, there was a thousand people watching um, uh, the Rolling Stones. You're 28 feet away from Mick Jagger. My hippiedom went along with Star Trek. And we see for the first time on TV the original James Kirk and the social lessons that my friends were gleaning being stoned going, oh man, I get it. I get it. They're teaching us to live together. 